like this. So we, as, uh, as, uh, Mr. as the ambassador said, Donna Maria II and Queen Victoria are contemporary. In fact, uh, Donna Maria is only two months uh, older than Queen Victoria. And uh, um, there's, there's, it's, there's a fantastic story behind, behind uh, all this that so many people don't know uh, very well. And I myself didn't know, uh, didn't know it until I started to study it. Um, the letters between Victoria and Maria are extraordinary. And thank God the Windsor Archives still has them and we're able to read them. And uh, letters are something that um, tell you so much about, uh, about somebody, more than documents that though, of course exist and treaties and all that, but letters and diaries um, bring us into the intimacy of somebody. Nana Maria II was a queen when she was seven years old, so she was a little girl queen, and um, she uh, was born. She was born in Brazil. Uh, the Portuguese royal family had left Lisbon for Brazil uh, on counsel of uh, uh, of the English because th that in that way they were able to maintain uh, the throne. Uh, because the, the throne was uh, the was done uh, from Rio de Janeiro, so the the Napoleon invasion wasn't able to uh, overthrow uh, the King of Portugal, and that was a very clever move. Uh, she she is the daughter, so she's. She will be one of the very few, or I think maybe at the time, the only um, queen uh, or king born outside Europe that becomes uh, a, a king or, or queen of Europe. Um, her father is Don Pedro I. When she is born, he's the heir to the throne. Um, his father uh, is the king, Don Juan, Don Juan VI. And her mother is Leopoldina of Austria. Leopoldina of Austria um, is a very brave woman, a very beautiful woman, a very brave woman. And we have to imagine what it was for a woman to leave uh, Europe, to leave Austria and arrive in Rio de Janeiro in the 19th century. It, I'm sure it was a big cultural shock. In, um, at a certain point, she will have cows brought from Austria, uh, <clears throat> cows brought to Rio de Janeiro, because she doesn't want her children to drink buffalo uh, milk, and so she'll bring cows. And it uh, was, I'm sure, um, a strong cultural shock. And her husband is not at all an easy, an easy person. In fact, um, but she will play a very important role in uh, what is the, the, uh, the proclamation of independence of Brazil. Uh, it's called the Grito do Ipiranga, when um, Maria's father and mother will become um, the emperor and the empress of Brazil. And if you look at the picture, little Maria is on the, la on the lap of uh, somebody behind her father and her mother. She's two years old at the time. She was born in uh, Palacio de São Cristóvão. It's in the outskirts of Rio de Janeiro. Now it is surrounded by houses. Unfortunately, two years ago, it burned, um, burned down and it was really unfortunate and lots of things weren't saved. But for me, childhood is a very important. I believe the childhood um, doesn't define us ultimately uh, or def definitively, but in fact, it, it um, is very important to determine who we are. And so uh, during all my investigation, I always go to the places where uh, my queens were born because it's completely different to be born in uh, Lisbon, Rio de Janeiro or uh, London. Um, 
it's not only, of course, I can't go back in time. And sometimes when I go back to these places, uh, I can't find exactly the same the reality that was there, but it's completely different. And you will see it in the way Maria's life unfolds. The fact that a child grows up in a Brazilian geography with this climate, with this culture and all of that. So unfortunately, she, and we're lucky, not only by going to places, by reading letters, but we're very lucky that the Empress wrote uh, to her sisters, wrote to her mother. And so we have lots of details of Maria's childhood. Uh, Maria, um, the mother tells her sisters that Maria was a very big baby. Uh, she tells her sisters and her mother that uh, King Pedro, her, the father, will um, mm, uh, play with her and receive ambassadors with, with her daughter sitting on his lap, that he will uh, have his hat on and ambassadors, European ambassadors will find it rather strange that he has his children around him when he has meetings. But he will, she will uh, also tell us that she has um, a very sunny temperament, uh, but she loses her temper frequently, that she likes strawberries. So it's fantastic when we have so much detail that we can build as a writer, we can build on facts and we can build on descriptions and, um, and we have all that information. But they were not a happy family. Um, the mistress was a concubine, Domitilia, uh, that King Pedro uh, will transform, give a title. Um, she is also a mother of four children of the emperor, and they will go, their relationship will go beyond limits. In fact, the letters they exchange between them, and you can find them easily, are for over 18. I mean, Sandra, you should put, if I had the letters, you should put a little, you know, that, uh, that round <laughs> thing saying the children couldn't, couldn't hear because in fact, they're very explicit and they're very strange. And um, the empress uh, suffered a lot with this uh, mistress and the children that were brought into the house and grew up with the, the empress children. And you can say, as sometimes we tend to say, oh, but at that time, uh, every, man, uh, every man had a mistress, women were used to it. But that's the big mistake we do so many times when we look back into history. We think that people didn't feel and didn't uh, suffer as we do. It's a bit as if uh, emotions were invented uh, now, and it's not true. As, as you will see, it's not true because for the, um, the day before Leopoldina dies, she will dictate this letter to um, one, her lady of the bedchamber. My beloved sister, for love of a seductive monster, I see myself reduced to a state of total slavery and completely forgotten by my beloved Pedro. Lately, he has given me evidence of forgetting me completely, mistreating me in the presence of the one who is the cause of all my misfortunes. So, so much I have to tell you, but I lack the strength to recall such a terrible event that will undoubtedly be the cause of my death. In fact, she does die in two days time after this letter is written. And some years ago, about three or four years ago, um, historians and scientists opened Leopoldina's coffin and x-rayed and did lots of exams to find out if she, in fact, as this letter says, had been mistreated in a domestic violent um, uh, happening. But in fact, they saw that she had no broken bones. She had no broken bones, but visibly she had a heart broken. And what they believe is she had a septicemia provoked by a miscarriage. 
and by this letter we understand that uh, she um, she thinks that the cause of this miscarriage was caused by Dom Pedro. So this was not a happy uh, family. And Maria is seven at the time when she loses her mother. But at the same time, something else happens. The King of Portugal, so Pedro, Maria's grandfather dies. And Dom Pedro is, for a very brief moment, King of Portugal and Emperor of Brazil simultaneously. What happens is neither Brazil nor Portugal wanted um, uh, the same ruler in both uh, places. So what happens is Dom Pedro will abdicate in favor of his daughter, his seven-year-old daughter, and he will decide that she will marry his brother Miguel, who is much older, so she will marry her uncle and she will come to Europe and um, they, Miguel, Maria and Miguel will rule, he will be a consort and she will be the queen. But um, Don Miguel has a, a different idea. He doesn't want a liberal constitution, he doesn't want to marry his niece, and he says all this, and rumors arrive in Rio de Janeiro that he is going to usurp the throne. So Don Pedro quickly sends his daughter uh, uh, to Europe, puts her on a boat with, with a group of people with her, and sends her to Europe. But when they arrive in Gibraltar, three months after, Don Miguel has taken the power, has been acclaimed King of Portugal, and in fact is the ruler. So what would they do with little Maria? Um, they couldn't phone uh, Don Pedro. Anyway, Don Pedro, with his bipolar nature, you, you couldn't trust what he would say. So they decide to send her to London. They decide to send her to London, where there's a very uh, a man, an important man. He'll become Duke of Palmela. And this man, who's an ex-ambassador, because when Don Miguel comes to the throne and usurps the throne, he says he's an ex-ambassador because he won't represent Don Miguel in London. And she is sent uh, to London to his care. Uh, and they believe that they can change um, uh, the, the, the British opinion about Don Miguel and make them side with Dona Maria. And so she will uh, come uh, to London and um, the king, George IV, will take quite a long time before he invites her to Windsor. Uh, he pulls the strings to, to try and get um, more support for uh, the Liberals. And uh, some weeks before Christmas, uh, Dona Maria is nine, and he will finally say, send her an invitation. Uh, it's fascinating the letters that are sent to Brazil and from Brazil very quickly because they have very little money. The Liberals have very little money. Dom Pedro doesn't send money. And it looks like an evening with Cinderella. Where will they find the money for the carriage to take her to Windsor? Where will they find the money to uh, make a new dress so that she uh, can appear uh, uh, and, uh, to Windsor uh, like a real queen? But they do get the carriage, they do get the dress, and George IV is, loves the little queen. She is very, she has been tutored to say the exact right things, and he is so impressed with her that he has her painted. And when you look at this painting, you, you'll say, but she's nine year old. Uh, she seems so much older. But in fact, the portrait and King George knew that, uh, wanted to um, make the liberals uh, and the country believe that this is a woman that is prepared to reign. So he doesn't want to put her as a child. He wants to give her uh, a very royal look so that uh, his, her cause will have uh, more strength. He pays 200 guineas for it, and, um, and the portrait, I think, is beautiful. Um, uh, 
people around make arrangements. So Victoria, Victoria is being groomed to be a queen, but she still hasn't uh, the promise that she will be a queen. Maria is a queen and is very proud of that fact. And they will meet uh, once or twice. And um, what I, and this is fiction, what I feel is that they were attracted because when they get older, they'll talk about this. Um, they were attracted by their differences. Dona Maria is a child born in Brazil, uh, very affectionate. She will touch um, uh, and um, uh, she will, uh, she hasn't had a formal education at all. Um, and uh, Queen Victoria, as we know, has a difficult childhood, is inside uh, inside a house and not outside in a in a place like Rio de Janeiro. And I think that they they maybe their differences attracted them. Um, what happens as the letter, the ambassador was uh, the Austrian ambassador was quick to send the letter where Leopoldina talks about the mistreatment her, she received from her husband. He uh, gets the letter to Austria and all the European courts know that Don Pedro is, um, is a man that is not a very good husband and that he has this relationship with this woman that has a lot of power over him. So he finds it very difficult to remarry. The ambassadors try and find him a princess. They try even to find one of Leopoldina's sister, but all doors are closed. So, um, and he ends up, the ambassadors tell him, you have to put Dumitili out of the way if you want to remarry. And I love this letter because this letter tells, at least to me, tells us so much about, about Don Pedro. He visits his mistress every day. The house is just near his. And suddenly he sends her this letter. I love you, but above you, I love my reputation that has now been restored through Europe and repaired. I come once again to proclaim my love, but at the same time, tell you that I cannot come over. And this is the end. She will move away from Rio de Janeiro and uh, the, the new stepmother, Maria's stepmother, Dona Amelia, uh, will, uh, um, will come to Brazil. But then Dom Pedro puts the ambassador, uh, the Manuel Lobantunes, you, you were lucky because this, <laughs> this Dux Palmela um, had a very difficult time with the king because the king was always giving him orders and counter orders on uh, not the king, the emperor. And now he says, no, my daughter has to come back to Rio de Janeiro. I don't want my daughter in Europe without me. She has to come back. And the liberals have been able to raise army, have been able to raise the diplomatic help. And suddenly their flag, that is the little queen, is told down back to Rio de Janeiro with her stepmother, a beautiful stepmother that's not much older than her. And so she goes away from Europe. To tell a story, to, to shorten the story, what's happened, what happens in Brazil is that life politically becomes very difficult for Dom Pedro. Uh, and he has to abdicate, is made to abdicate on, in favor of his son, his five-year-old son. And he brings Maria and his wife, um, his new wife, back to Europe. Now he's a Duke of Braganza, but he decides that he will pick up the sword, hold the sword and fight for his daughter's throne. In fact, he's fighting uh, for power for himself also. And he is able with lots to come back and uh, fight in Portugal, the, the, the war of the two brothers. They go through London again. Victoria is again with Dona Maria. Um, thankfully, she writes it down in her diaries. Victoria's diaries are fantastic. And she writes of this meeting with Maria again. And Maria uh, will uh, finally be on the throne 
um, and uh, the scepter made of the queen, the crown, the, cha the charter and the uh, brigands, the dragon, and that you will soon, when all this um, pandemic finishes, or at least we're allowed to travel, be able to see it in the Palacio da Ajuda that has just opened um, a new uh, space in the museum for the jewels of the crown. And this scepter that was made for Queen Maria is one of the greatest jewels that is there. Uh, she will, her father will die soon after. Uh, he's 30 something in the, in the Palacio de Caluj, the same palace where he, is, he was born. He will die in the same bed. And she has to marry quickly. She's a woman, she's a young woman. The country is a chaos, complete chaos economically. And there's still, there's still a civil war going on. And he marries the um, brother of his of her stepmother, but unfortunately, her second marriage also doesn't really happen because he arrives in Portugal. She thinks he's beautiful, but he will die of a strep throat or typhoid typhoid fever um, two months, three months later. Finally. Maria is lucky, third time lucky, Ferdinand of Saxe-Coburg and Gotha. He is the first cousin, as the ambassador was saying, he's the first cousin of Albert and Victoria, and but he is a Catholic line of the Saxe-Cobergs, so he can marry uh, Donna Maria, but she's a Catholic also because he's a Catholic. He arrives at the wedding is in the April, and he becomes king consort in 37. Why this difference? Because in Portugal, a king was only, had only the title of king after he had born a son. And so they have a son very quickly, and he is king consort by September the, of 1837. Victoria and Albert marry, um, she's 18, so Mary, Maria is already a mother when, when they marry. And from here onwards, the letters between them are weekly. Every week they write to each other. And it's so funny to read the letters because Dona Maria, you see uh, that her formal education is not good. Um, the sentence have no, uh, no final points. They're all, uh, my dear cousin, they're written in French. My dear cousin, I'm so happy um, that you married. Um, but you know, I, I wish you the happiest, a very happy marriage. And I wish you get pregnant very, very quickly. And then a uh, comma. And would you please take out of here the ambassador because he's a party man and I really don't like him, comma. Oh, could you send me those lovely flowers I saw you had in the garden? And so the letters are so full of life. She's writing and taking care of the children and uh, signing decrees and doing all this at the time. Victoria is, uh, uh, her, 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 um, her paragraphs are perfect. It's a com completely different. And there's one at this time, Maria, to see the difference between them, Maria will write, uh, I wish you a very happy wedding, uh, um, your, uh, a very happy marriage, and um, the, I hope you have lots of children quickly. And Victoria writes, well, I, I don't want to have children right now. I would prefer to wait. And Maria says, let her back. No, you can't be happy if you don't have children. And she writes back, no, but I'm, I like power. I like governing. I don't want children straight away. So then Maria writes the sentence that I love saying, well, I wish you all the happiness possible in a marriage without children. <laughs> and so she has always the final word. But it's not only, they don't talk only about, and what happens is not only uh, this friendship. There are two women in places of power, and power is not easy for women. 
and power is not easy in a country like Portugal, where there's a party uh, rising up every day, where people change the party from one side, from conservative to liberal, they go on changing. It's a very, very confusing moment. And to think of this girl, she's 16, 17, 18, who suddenly has this country in front of her, politicians that care less about um, very little about her and more about their own politics and she doesn't know what to do and Victoria is always sending advice and her advice is always very sensible but Victoria lives in a parliament, uh, parliamentary democracy, uh, stable and Maria is living in a revolution. So when she says Victoria is the best of friends, and I know she always tries to protect us, but her, her arrogance can be intolerable, intolerable at times. When it comes to Portugal, I know best. And uh, Victoria will say, Maria says the life of a married queen is easy, only if she is speaking about herself, because she does everything behind her husband's back, keeping up the appearance of being a daughter docile and an obedient wife. So um, in fact, poor Queen Victoria is talking to Lord Palmerston and asking them to help Portugal. They have lots of reasons to help Portugal, commercial reasons, economic reasons, but she's always trying to protect Maria and trying to tell Lord Palmerston and the other prime ministers that come and go that Maria is not um, is doing right and that the conditions are difficult. So uh, Donna, uh, Queen Victoria will send, uh, they will feel as a family, they will share Christmas uh, postcards, Christmas presents, and Victoria will send twice to Portugal painters uh, to paint the royal family. And we're very lucky because in fact, Portugal has no paintings of the children except for these. And these belong, nowadays, they belong to the British libraries. And when I want to put them in my books, I buy them from the British library. So we're very lucky that in fact, the painters came and painted such good portraits. And you look, at least you look at these children and you see beautiful children. And Dona Maria was a fantastic mother. Uh, she loved her children. She loved to, for instance, go out on walks with them. She would go to the garden, Jardim da Estrela, or, or Passe Public, and she would sit with her children knitting while they played around. Of course, Victoria has a completely different approach to the children. And um, in fact, they, um, when Dona Maria, Maria has very easy pregnancies and very easy births. And Victoria, we know today, has uh, what was uh, postpartum depression. And Dona Maria, as those people who are mentally well, will say, write to Victoria and say, why don't you get up the day after your birth? Why don't you, the births, why don't you do things? Why don't you try and uh, take that depression away? Why don't you garden? And poor Victoria, as everybody who has had or knows people who have had depression around you, poor Victoria was not at all, I'm sure, thankful for these letters. But Maria becomes increasingly, increasingly overweight. overweight. Uh, she has diabetes and she has two child, uh, stillborn children. And Victoria becomes very, very worried with that and is always telling her not to have more children. But she uh, says, I, I die at my post. And so she will go on having children and she will die at 33 years, when she's 33, for, with the 11th pregnancy. We look at this and we think, and now um, women start having children at 33 and not, uh, they're not on the 11th child. Um, I was just going to tell you one story. If Sandra, have I time? Oh, I'm talking too much. Um, 
what uh, there was uh, Victoria discovered chloroform. She discovered that the births were much easier if she had chloroform. And she has a do the doctor who invented and used chloroform uh, in births. She has him uh, brought to the palace and assist her births. And she tells Maria, why don't you use chloroform? And she says that she sent chloroform to Maria. And when I read and I studied that Maria had died of this birth after the chloroform, I thought perhaps the doctors have used it badly. Perhaps that was one of the causes of her death. And I was anxious trying to find, because being a historical novelist and um, you, you, you try and find the facts, the pieces of the puzzle to fit in. And what happens is that I couldn't find anything about this. But finally, I found a letter. Victoria must have been really upset with exactly the same question that I was asking. Did Maria use the chloroform? Because we find a letter written by Maria's stepmother saying that uh, she received the chloroform but didn't use it. And so we, to that riddle, at least we have the answer. Maria was a very brave woman. And um, this letter is rather depressing, but I think it's written by the um, the Queen's Lady of the Bedchamber, and she says, the operation started. I climbed on the bed. On the right, the Duchess of Braganza was awash in tears. The Queen, with energy and without fainting, but looking terrible and complaining of how she was suffering, said in her normal voice, Teixeira, is my life at risk? Please tell me. Don't fool me. I won't make assumptions, but I, ha I have the strongest feeling that if João Lourenço and Magalhães Coutinho had come sooner, things could have been different, but they went for them only when there was nothing they could do. So she will die, she will have her children around her um, and her husband, but she will die unfortunately at 33. Um, the, she, her death was very much felt and her, her children, so many little children orphaned and Don Fernando, who loved her so much, was really uh, upset by this, this sudden death. But I would like to show you this just to finish. For me, eternity is living on in others. And Prince Albert buys this portrait in an auction of Dona Maria when she's eight years old and uh, when Maria, eight years after her death. This means that uh, Albert knows of this friendship with uh, Victoria and um, goes and finds this picture to give his wife. And if you see by the um, by the look of it, she, I'm sure, put it beside the others near her and continued on remembering. Um, some short time ago, I found this photograph just to finish because what happens is Victoria is all the time telling and, and Albert are telling uh, Maria and Ferdinand to send the children to the eldest two boys, the, the, the heir, the prince heir, and the second one, Don Pedro and Don Luis, to send them to England, to send them to see England, uh, because the, um, Don Pedro, the, the, uh, Dona Maria's eldest son, who will be king, is uh, corresponds very much, corresponds frequently with Albert, and he's very enthused with politics and everything. But Dona Maria will never let her children out, uh, out of her view. And when she dies, Don Fernando, the father, will send them. And this, this photograph is of Queen Victoria, uh, Prince Pedro, and Prince Don Luis Felipe when they go and they fulfill this wish of Victoria and they go uh, and spend nearly six months in, in England. So, sorry if I've mix so much, so many things together, but maybe we can go to the question and answer and, and continue from here. 